So I'm here in Tampa, Florida. I just checked out like it's uh, 6 p.m. I'm on my way back now and all the fucking traffic here. Um, coming down 75. Um, I checked out probably like, I don't even know how many, I think like 10 to 12 properties. It doesn't sound like a lot, but these things are like all over the place and I've been driving for I think six or seven hours now. Um, so yeah, so now I'm just coming back in the traffic, got a little bit of time. Um, you know, I, you know, I was like, what is this video gonna be about? And I guess it, it, it's about time, you know? Like, I'm just starting to kind of get to the point where um, I need to really be good with like time management. Um, I've been doing absolutely everything myself, and I think initially you need to. Like, you need to learn how to do accounting. You need to learn how to do research. You need to learn how to do all the web stuff. You need to learn, because you're not gonna have enough money to be able to uh, to pay people to do that for you. Like, you've really gotta learn almost every single facet, and it kinda sucks, because you've gotta wear like probably 10, or 10, 11, 12 hats, you know? But um, I've been doing that for a while, and uh, I'm getting to the point now where like, I wouldn't say like I have like an absorbent amount of money that I could like outsource, but it's just like I need to pay for, um, you know, people to, I'm pausing because I'm driving here at the same time, <laughs> people are crazy. Um, you know, I need to be able to pay people to just sort of help me because I cannot, I'm, I'm basically kind of plateauing out a little bit. Um, it's like... Um, there's just not enough time and you know some of it is like even with these even with the property scouting like I'm not a, a just a property scout that's not what this whole YouTube channel is about this YouTube channel is about building a business as a sole proprietor you're the only person in the in the business and you're and you're struggling you know um, and you have to be a property scout as well so, you know, I just recently um, just started getting a virtual assistant through uh, Upwork.com. I tried a few different websites, but Upwork was like, hands down, like had the best platform. They track the payments and they, they track like so much, it's crazy. Like that, they did a really good job with that interface. Anyway, so I found someone, um, he's in Pakistan. So was, his hours are not the same, sorry if this, this is jiggling, but uh, these hours are not the same as mine, but it doesn't matter because his willingness to work is overcome by the fact that he's on the opposite side of the world. Like, this, so far, this guy has been like, like, he'll answer his phone at, uh, or he'll answer an email or a message at like 3 a.m. Like, he doesn't care. I guess he just gets up if he sees a message, which is like, really cool. Um, but anyways, so like, I'm trying to start to assign tasks to him, but you know, in the end, like, how do you scale this real estate business? Like, how do you scale, um, if I'm going to look at these properties, right, and it requires some knowledge as far as, like, what to look for, what not to look for, how can I even do this? Like, I would need to train a property scout, and the property scout would have to, I can't just hire, like, anybody, right? And then, on top of that, there could be danger involved, you know, like, are they gonna, what if they miss something? So now this person who missed something that, that would have potentially been big could be the difference between making and losing money. Like I, the thing that I know is that from everyone that I've talked to, the people who have like really made it big in this business are people that don't, they don't go look at the properties themselves. And from what I've gathered, is that they're just willing to take that risk. Like they don't win on every single deal. They'll literally win on four or five of the deals and then one of them they'll lose. And then uh, they just do the, those, they just work those numbers in. It's just considered part of the business. So they'll win on three or four or five, lose on one and they just, that's it. They just scale that out and there's, there's wins and there's losses. But when you're starting off, 
we can't have losses. <laughs> like one loss is like, you're done. Like you're, you're freaking done. Like we're not big enough. Like whoever's watching this is probably just kind of starting off or whatever. Um, you know, and like you can't take a five, six, seven thousand, ten thousand dollar loss. Like that's it, you know? And it would be, you know, I, I could probably survive that, but that would hurt too. I mean, it would hurt emotionally. I mean, losing $10,000 is like a big freaking deal, you know, like um, just everything. You're, you lose a little bit of confidence. Um, you know, I'd probably double down and just keep going and, and just try to try to see it through another time. But then what if you lose twice? And that, now you're really in trouble, right? Now you're like addicted to a gambling problem or something. So... Anyways, you don't want to be in that position. I don't. I don't either. But so then, how do you go from like not taking risks and doing the proper amount of research where you only have a limited amount of time? Like right now, I can only research um, about 50 properties in a week. Between the driving, the CMAs. Um, which are the comparable analysis to actually do the numbers and uh, you know just all the research that's involved it's it's at least 50 60 hours a week just to do those 50 so how do you scale that 50 to 100 you know and, and my friend Chuck and I my friend and I Chuck um, you know, we're trying to figure that out, honestly. I don't even have the answer for you guys. I don't have the answer. So it's kind of like, I think it would be a mix between uh, casting a wider net, cast a wider geographical area. Um, I'd have to train a property scout, which I've already tried. Um, and just based off those pictures, you know, maybe you just lowball the, uh, the offers to the point where like, there's like, you just automatically subtract like, I don't know, 20 grand or something off the max bid price just because it's like a, an extended property, uh, something along those lines. But it, it's a good question to have. I mean, I don't know. So we're going to figure that out, I guess, over time. You know, I, I'm hoping that that's kind of like where this can go. I mean, there's a whole other business too of uh, people who are like bidding on like XOME and auction.com and they're just taking this on like a national level. Like for these auctions, these are all county levels. So every single time you get auctions through the county, it's gonna be very specific to just that county. Like, that, like it's only those and you know, you're probably just do it where you live. Well, there are some people that they just bid on, they do this research on a national level. And I don't know, from what I've gathered from them, um, I guess they just pay someone to take pictures and they just base it off the pictures they just a like property scout and then just they try to you know I people are doing it people are are successful that is a way to do it so I I don't know you know how they could possibly do that and be successful but you know maybe it's worth trying maybe in the future I'll, I'll even I'll even try it and we'll have a couple videos on on how to do that you know we'll, we'll see but um Yeah, I think I think that's it for this one, you know. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.